Well, on a reserve, the opportunities for people to witness an abduction are not the same as in a city. Tonight, Frank Young went missing weeks ago. A petition is being circulated demanding changes to the way police issue Amber Alerts. We're here because my wife deserves a public inquiry. We're here because other people harmed in the healthcare system. A family from Manitoba wants to know why a loved one died in an Edmonton hospital. Our language and culture will be eroded because we're forced to choose between it and becoming proficient in French. And pushing back against Quebec's new language law. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to APTN National News. For the second time in less than a week, people in Winnipeg gathered to remember an Indigenous woman who was the victim of a homicide. Last night, a vigil was held for Doris Trout. The 25-year-old First Nations woman was found dead last week outside a downtown apartment complex. Friends and family of Trout, including her three children, gathered for song and prayer and to pay their respects. Manitoba, Kuwait, Naui, Okimakinak staff organized the event Wednesday evening. And MKO will also travel to God's Lake First Nation to support the community. Winnipeg police are seeking the public's help in locating two females who they say are people of interest. Well, as we mentioned, that was the second vigil held in Winnipeg in the past week to remember an Indigenous woman who has been killed. The bodies of Doris Trout and Rebecca Contois were discovered in the span of a little more than a week. For more on this, we're joined by Heidi Spence, the MMIWG liaison for Manitoba, Kuwait, and Naui, Okimakinak. Heidi, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, it's been a, a devastating couple of weeks in Winnipeg with two Indigenous women uh, have been murdered. Uh, you're rather new in the role, but but how are friends and family coping? Um, I, you know, it's it's kind of, it's hard to say, you know, um, uh, I obviously, you know, this, this is a really, really hard time for friends, family, community members, um, and, you know, the, that shock, you know, it, it it affects everybody differently and you know that uh, initial you know those feelings that come when when you hear something tragic like this so um you know it's the the emotions are are very high um you know there's there's a lot of things that they need to process and like i said i can't um say specifically how they're doing because like i said it's you know it's every family's different in the case of uh, Rebecca Quantois, uh, a man is in custody. Police warned there may be more victims. Does that have people on edge? Um, I I would say yeah. Uh, I would say that it it does. You know, it's um it is quite concerning um, that you know they've identified that you know in in the news and um, they've shared some of that and you know I've I've heard you know just just in general that you know people. You know they're they're wondering and and they are concerned because it's you know it's quite frightening mm -hmm. uh, uh, Heidi all of this is coming as we're a little more than a week away from the third anniversary of the MMIWG final report being turned over to the Prime Minister uh, what would you like to see done um you know I would like to see Canadians everybody you know um take take the time to to really educate themselves in in what's in the final report you know gain some of that knowledge and you know and, and take the time to read it um and and see what it is and also to learn about you know the history of you know indigenous people as well and you know everything that's happened prior to and and you know why they have you know the the final report and you know there's there's a there's a lot of history and there's you know there's a lot of education i think that needs to to take place and you know to to have the you know canadians and and the government you know to start implementing those um 231 calls for justice because they they are legal um you know and 
and that's you know there it's not something that you know is just kind of put together that those are action items that that should be followed through Heidi, we'll uh, have to leave it there, but uh, we welcome you to your new role and uh, appreciate you taking some time for us here. Thank you. A Vancouver grassroots activist wants changes to the Amber Alert system. Jamie Smallboy has gotten more than 500 signatures on an online petition to make that change happen. But as Leanne Sanders reports, he's hoping for at least 500 more. Jamie Smallboy says the case of missing five-year-old Frank Young at Red Earth Cree Nation is just another example of a system that doesn't serve missing Indigenous people. When Young went missing April 19th, RCMP said his disappearance didn't meet the criteria to warrant an Amber Alert. There was no evidence he'd been abducted. But Jamie Smallboy says situations on reserves are different. Well, on a reserve, the opportunities for people to witness an abduction are not the same as in a city or in a town setting because you have people on every corner in a city, but not on the reserve. We do have people that drive on the reserves looking and hunting for our women and our children. They don't include that. They don't, that doesn't even hit the Amber Alert criteria at all. So it needs to be adjusted to be inclusive of all the differences. Small boy believes the ball gets dropped many times when an Indigenous person is reported missing. That's kind of, it seems like where the breakdown is, the individual's bias, they take it upon themselves. Well, is this an emergency or is this not an emergency? Is this person really missing or are they just Indigenous and they're out partying or they're at a cousin's or they're at an auntie's? Small boy is hoping to present the change.org petition to Justice Minister David Lametti and the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, Mark Miller, this fall and plans to gather more signatures over the summer. Leanne Sanders, APTN National News, Saskatoon. To Edmonton now, where a gathering took place outside of the office of the medical examiner to bring light to mistreatment of Indigenous peoples within the Canadian health care system. Tamara Pimentel has that story. Community members of Sandy Bay First Nation in Manitoba traveled to Edmonton to seek justice for Lillian Vanass. The Sandy Bay woman died in a Hannah, Alberta hospital in December 2020. I'm very angry, but at the same time, I'm so lost. She was my best friend. She was the love of my life. Almost 17 years together. Her husband, Corey Ashley, recorded video of his wife lying in a hospital bed with difficulty breathing. He says she was denied oxygen before she died. And today, Ashley still doesn't know the cause of her death. He organized this demonstration in Edmonton to demand answers and to ask for an inquiry. We're here because my wife deserves a public inquiry. We're here because other people harmed in the healthcare system. Other people like Sarah Morrison. In January 2021, she went into labor with her first child when she says she was also denied emergency medical treatment by hospitals in both Kitimat and Terrace, BC. She later gave birth to a stillborn daughter. I was treated like I was nothing. I felt like they left me to die with my baby inside me. Morrison and her partner have since filed lawsuits against five doctors and a nurse. This needs to change. And I just want people to see that this is a pattern of neglect. As for Vanessa's case, Ashley filed complaints with the College of Physicians and Surgeons, and Indigenous investigators have been included to review the complaint. The College and Association of Registered Nurses of Alberta is also investigating. It called two nurses involved in that case to attend a hearing tribunal. The hearings are scheduled for September. And we're here to show that things need to change. APTN News has reached out to the office of the Chief Medical Examiner for a comment. It says the situation can only be discussed with next of kin. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Calgary. Have you ever felt mistreated by the healthcare system? We'd like to hear from you. Here's how you can get in touch. 
You can send your emails to news at aptn.ca or leave a comment on our website, that's aptnnews.ca. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow APTN News to join the conversation and see our latest stories. Well, at a stop in Saskatoon on Wednesday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoke out about the mass shooting at uh, elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Police officials in the community near San Antonio say 21 are now confirmed dead, most of them school children in grade four. Reporters asked Trudeau about his government's stance on guns, but Trudeau spoke instead of the emotional impact of the shooting. As a parent, I'm gonna have to go home to my kids, including my eight-year-old, and talk to them again about the inexplicable school shooting that we saw in the United States. I think of the parents suffering unbelievable losses in Texas. But I also think of the teachers, because I was a teacher, professionally obliged to care for and, and support our kids and the trauma they're going through. I think of the trauma the community is going through. I think of the shock that Americans and indeed people all around the world are facing right now at yet another incredibly senseless, violent act in innocent communities and schools. Time now for a quick break. Coming up, Indigenous language speakers have some choice words for Bill 96, Quebec's new language legislation. It's not being threatened by us. It's the French that are threatening us.
Welcome back. Today was budget day for the government of Nunavut. As members of Nunavut's 6th Legislative Assembly gathered in Iqaluit to hear the government spending plan for the year. The budget total, $2.5 billion in spending. There is a balancing act in place. The government of Nunavut will be spending less on COVID response, including subsidies for airlines. But an ambitious housing plan may have the territory going into deficit as the finance minister is willing to spend reserve money on housing construction. Here, Finance Minister Lorne Kusaguk explains why he thinks now is the time to go into deficit. We need more infrastructure and it's good to, good to create uh, surpluses every year, but we're infrastructure short and uh, if we have, uh, we have an ambitious plan to build a a thousand houses and, and work for elder care facilities, we're going to need to, uh, to do more than our budget allows us and dip into uh, previous surpluses. Quebec's controversial Bill 96 passed this week. The language bill provoked protests and numerous critical op-eds and choice words from First Nations and Inuit leaders in the province. While the government's assuring nothing much will change, Indigenous communities aren't so sure. Here's Amelia Fournier with that story. Bill 96 has been met with protests in Montreal and Ganawage leading up to its adoption on Tuesday. It increases French proficiency requirements for immigrants and college students and limits the use of any language other than French in courts and workplaces unless absolutely necessary. It's a matter of time before we lose uh, the, the presence of French in Quebec. The Legault government says Bill 96 will prevent the decline of French, but Indigenous people across the province say their languages are the ones in danger. French is not being threatened by us. It's the French that are threatening us. Mohawks, Cree and Inuit in Quebec were forced to learn English, not French, in residential schools. So their communities speak their indigenous language and English. Tanya Perron is a member of the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. She's concerned about how Bill 96 will affect legal proceedings. The vagueness, the ambiguity, the discretion that's under that section is very concerning to me as, uh, you know, as uh, in my position right now as a political leader in the community, but also uh, as a lawyer. It requires organizations to submit all court documents in French, adding additional costs and delays for translations. Perron said this could get in the way of filing time-sensitive injunctions or child protection orders. If you have to do that and it has to be done quickly, and you have to pr provide those proceedings or pleadings or whatever it is in, in French, there's going to be delays. So what happens with the child while, you're, while those delays are running? She is also concerned that parents will send their kids outside of the community for French education to the detriment of them learning Ganyangeha, the Mohawk language. Our language and culture will be eroded because we're forced to choose between it and becoming proficient in French to survive in this, within this province. Ganawage students protested last weekend with concerns the bill would discourage young Mohawks from attending university in Quebec. Harriet Kelutak from the Nunavik School Board has similar concerns. Not only will they have to leave their homes, but they will have to leave their province if they want to continue their education in English. While Inuit are allowed to teach Nuktitut as a first language under the James Bay Agreement, Bill 96 will require college students to pass more French courses and will limit spots in English colleges. Inuit students already have to move out of their small communities to attend post-secondary school and are now required to learn academic French. They're repeating what was done 50, 60 years ago when we were forced to not to speak our language in classrooms um, and we got punished for it. For speaking in, in Indigenous Affairs Minister Yann Lafreniere said he has met with Indigenous leaders and will continue the conversation. As you know, Bill 96 has been approved today, yes, but it's a matter of about two years to put that in place. So we'll still get time in front of us. 
We want to find a solution, a, a workable solution, a practical solution. So my offer is to work with First Nations to find solutions for them. Emilia Fournier, APTN National News, Montreal. The season finale of Nation to Nation is coming up tonight right after the news. We've got a preview for you coming up after the break. Welcome back. Time now for our photo of the day. Our viewer Gail French sent in this vibrant and colorful photo of a hummingbird in action as it comes in for a suckle from a feeder right outside of Gail's home. Great shot, Gail. If you have a great photo, be sure to email that to us at share at aptn.ca for the chance to be shared across the country as our next photo of the day. Now let's take a look at Friday's weather forecast. Starting on the east coast, 19 with showers for Halifax, cloudy and 7 in St. John's. 11 in Kujuwak, 6 in Nain. 22 with showers in Montreal, 17 and rain in Baldor. Cloudy and 16 in Sault Ste. Marie, 20 with rain for North Bay. Sunny skies and 25 for Thunder Bay, rain and 22 in Sioux Lookout. 11 with showers for God's Lake and Thompson, 18 in the Paw. 25 in Winnipeg, 22 with rain in Dauphin. Showers and 22 in Saskatoon and Swift Current. 19 in Meadow Lake, cloudy and 17 for Buffalo Narrows. Over in Northern Alberta, 19 with showers in High Level, Peace River and Fort McMurray. 21 in rain in Edmonton and Calgary. 16 with showers for Vancouver and Victoria. 12 with rain in Smithers, 15 in Dease Lake. 8 in Old Crow, 13 with rain in Whitehorse. Showers in 17 for Yellowknife and Wrigley. 3 in Saks Harbor, snow and plus 4 for Polituck. 
Zero in Whale Cove 4 in Arbiet. Minus three with snow in Resolute. Minus four with snow in Arctic Bay. Well, we are just minutes away from the final episode of Nation to Nation this season. Here's Brett Forrester with what he has coming up. Thanks, Winnipeg. My first guest tonight will be NDP MP Blake Desjardins to discuss a couple big stories out of his home region of eastern Alberta. The millions of tax dollars owed by the oil industry to indigenous communities and municipalities. And of course, the trial of two men accused of murdering two Métis hunters. Then I'm joined by the chief of a brand new First Nation in Northern Ontario. Beaver House First Nation was recognized last month after being ignored for more than a century. Plus, it's our season finale, so I'll revisit some of the memorable segments. Stick around for all this right after the news. Thanks, Brett. Tomorrow on APTN Investigates, the Thunder Bay Police Service is under fire for its handling of sudden death cases involving Indigenous peoples. The situation has been called a crisis by many, but the police don't see it that way. Here's a preview. Anishinaabek, Shkegawak, and all Indigenous peoples have the right to feel safe and be treated equitably within the city of Thunder Bay, especially by those sworn to serve and protect. What I was seeing and still continue to see is that in our capacity, we are failing miserably because again, we have, you know, some serious issues. Systemic racism exists within the Thunder Bay Police Service and needs to be ripped out at its roots. If this is your family, you would want justice. So you said this is not a crisis for you. What would be a crisis? So we recognize we certainly are in challenging times. That's different than being in crisis. Crisis, like, I don't know, you have multiple, invest multiple investigations, you're chief on your investigation, you're charged with a crime. Right, we have families who have to go home, you know, not receiving justice. Their families deserve answers. You have multiple kids dying in the river. You don't know how some of them die, it's undetermined. We demand that the Solicitor General of Ontario proceed with dismantling the Thunder Bay Police Service. I think anywhere else in the world, that's a crisis. For us currently though, what we see is business as usual. Part two of Business as Usual airs tomorrow night right here after the news. And you can catch part one of Business as Usual and find much more on Thunder Bay over on our website, aptnnews.ca. That's all the time we have for your APTN National News for this Thursday. Stick around, Brett is up next with the season finale of Nation to Nation. I'm Dennis Ward, thanks for being with us. Have a great night. She's in there though.